had this fascinating story of flows originating and, and debris, if you like, coming onto the from the watery area and even coming around the edges. Two tsunami waves interacting around a headland will then create waves. If any of you have followed or saw the sort of way in which the tsunami affected Sumatra and in, in the recent earthquakes and also in, uh, in California as well, uh, elsewhere, you'll have the tsunami waves which are affected by topography, bottom topography, so that headlands would escape and the concentration of the tsunami would be in the valleys, in the, in the low areas. And so you have tremendous build-up in the valleys. A similar thing on Mars. <clears throat> and in fact, they found a possible area. This is, of course, artists, licensed artists drawing to suggest that this particular asteroid triggered um, the luminosity cr crater on the northern plains was a likely source of the tsunami, tsunami impact. Uh, that area. But this is speculation. But certainly something like that would have had to be present to, to form. In recent times we've been affected by the uh, Curiosity. Curiosity is a lander which landed in 2012 in Gale Crater. That's the area where it landed. Again, notice that most of the landers are equatorial and most are in low, low altitudes. And, uh, Curiosity landing uh, in 2012, and then it formed when an asteroid hit in the early part of its history. And the crater is actually named after the Australian astronomer, Walter F. Gale, 1865 to 1945. So Gale Crater, we have an Aussie name there. And the Gale Crater is important because it had a whole set of infill. It was once a large lake, or inland sea, if you like, a large inland lake with all its structures and so the exploration for it's called Mount Sharp because the wind has eroded away so much of the surrounding lighter material leaving behind the central areas which uh, there's the <clears throat> over 55,000 meters, five kilometers of sediment over time and, and uh, it's etched out this whole surface. So the vault is the size of Curiosity there. So it's quite a large structure. And uh, well, now I'm starting to just get the last few slides for you. I'm venturing into an area which I think we've yet to find out more about. And that is how much groundwater. There's Dalhousie Springs from the satellite on the right hand side. And this is equivalent, Ruby Valley's a spring on Mars. So a lot of the water on Mars has certainly been from melting <coughs> of the permafrost underneath. We've got frozen ground, the melting of the permafrost has released water and, and it's flowed and, and that's a result of this sort of water. Um, but however, we do have these strange things. As well as that we get mound springs, just analogous to those if you've been up north, you know the sort of spring mounds that we get around the Artesian Basin where the water has been coming out carrying a bit of silt with it and so my question is is it possible that we could be forming caves in the <coughs> way in which the dissolution is occurring underground maybe not caves but certainly you would have had dissolution of material to be precipitated then on the surface who knows <coughs> and finally ice caps I showed you ice caves on Earth. Why not ice caves on Mars? Good question. I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer. Certainly, we know that there's both dry ice, carbon dioxide, dry ice, and water ice are present in both ice caps. More uh, dry ice in the southern ice cap, and less in the northern one. And a Swiss cheese pattern. This is uh, thought to be a result of a mixture of frozen carbon dioxide and normal ice. Apparently over two years of Mars years revealed that scarps around the Mises are retreating at a rate about three meters every Martian year. But no evidence of caves. Sorry. <laughs> evidence of caves. Maybe. Maybe there are, but who knows. Just the latest information. July 
what are we, August, it was just last month, it came out in Nature. Uh, some radar work. This is a southern ice cap, which is dominated by dry ice. And apparently on the side, they were able to do some radar, and the radar has picked up about a lake, a water, in other words, liquid water, at least a meter deep, and it's probably very, very saline, it's not frozen, in that sort of area. So basically, thank you very much. We can skip those. Um, there we are. Thank you. Questions? Were you surprised, by the way, at some things? Have I shown you something new? Yes. Good, 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 good. <coughs> Question at the back, yes. Yeah. Um, um, because, I'd like to know, yeah, with the uh, ice caps on the planet Mars, yes. there's like Mars, like here on Earth, that have uh, like a warmer weather on the summertime and yes. do they melt? Yeah, they um, have. But mainly, rather than melting, it's for frost. It's it's uh, it's going from gas to solid, solid to gas. It's yeah. uh, it's not going through the melted stage. It's uh, what do you call it? No, Sublimate. 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 Sublimation. Sublimation. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, but you do get when I gave a, a full lecture about Mars. I had a slide which showed. Uh, rain actually falling on Mars. It never makes the surface, but it actually got images where yeah. it goes through. The precipitation occurs high up, comes down, and basically va uh, evaporates by the time it gets to the surface. So there is rain occurring on Mars, but not reaching the surface. Uh, and there's also beautiful photographs of the winter results of freezing and, and frost on the dunes. So there's some amazing photographs of dune sands on Mars with frosted tops. And you can imagine the sort of colour patterns that you can, you can get. Just gorgeous ones, you'll see. Yeah, they're very similar weather to uh, our Earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> yes. Um, that uh, canyon that they have um, on Mars, yes, could more, there yeah. be caves yes. deep? Deep there, that and Good question. Also possibly Valles, Valles Marinaris is called, is a huge rifted canyon. It's in an area where the crust has clearly been bowed upwards, and just like our East African rift, upwards and pulling apart. And so you get rift systems, except there the rift systems are so big that it's uh, as, as long as from Sydney to Perth, I think, basically. Mm -hmm. It's huge. It's a really enormous size. One of the tributary canyons mm -hmm. is the size of our Grand Canyon. Mm -hmm. It's a small tributary. So, scales are enormous. Now, everything that we've seen there, there's no visible um, cave systems. Or, as I get, I'll just remind you, let's go through the thinking process. To form caves, you need to have had enough uh, soluble material deposited in lakes or seas for enough time for there to be uh, limestone, calcium carbonate or gypsum yeah. deposited or, or some evaporitic system which we've had on earth or if you like ice but then you have to have enough um, <coughs> uplift or enough changing sea levels as we, we don't have that on Mars but you have it on earth um, to expose the material to weathering and to rainfall, something which will dissolve it. So I think the conditions that you're asking for caves like Earth to be on Mars are simply not there to begin with. Yes, lava tubes, sure. We've got lava tubes and I've shown you. Yeah, sure, that's fine. And uh, one day there may be you know, areas that we can use as a safe areas for human habitation human presence on Mars because they're protected. Um, but at the moment, engineering-wise, we don't seem to be able to land there. Yeah, yeah. We've got to have enough atmosphere to get through, <coughs> to and so on, as I said. So yes, yes, so I'm, I'm still struggling to think of possibilities of um, cave systems in the polar regions, say. Um, but you see, I showed you some of these mound springs. 
evidence of mouse springs. They imply that you had water moving <coughs> through in between grains, in between sediments, and 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 dissolve some and bring out and making a mound. Now, is that could that have left some cave system? Maybe, maybe we're just human anthrop. We just so we need a cave which is our size, <laughs> not a cave which is size of an ant. Maybe we're actually forming caves the size of ants, in, intergranular caves in, in the volcanic sands of Mars. But they're small scale, not human scale. You know, we've got a bit prejudiced, don't we? We want to see caves our size. What about caves on Pluto in terms of the way oh, that there? Oh, I mean, Pluto has quite of course. Of atmosphere yes, yes, cycle. yes. And could there be ice caves in nitrogen ice? Yes, yes, yes. There could be all sorts of things. And some of the other moons. Yes, yes. Anybody interested in science fiction can certainly write some wonderful <laughs> stories. You know, just a, based, you, based you on know, the rain. Can you just repeat again, you're saying rain on Mars. Yes. Did you actually mean water rain? Or water, rain water? water rain. Water rain. Water rain. Just at a be... certain... Well, again, it's a case of atmospherics. It's mm -hmm. a case of um, within the atmosphere you've got a changing pressure, but also changing temperature. And so you have a very uh, high level uh, humidity, very high humidity which is enough to precipitate very fine rain, but it never makes it to the surface. It's just over oh, an interval of... It evaporates. It, 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 yes, 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 yes. Mind you, in, South, in Australia, mm. I've been in areas, and I've certainly had field people tell me, in our very hot weather when you have rain in our desert, yeah. it never reaches the surface. Mm. Mm. You can see it coming through the sky, it just never even... It doesn't even make this. Yeah. <laughs> Has this actually been photographed? Oh, yes, yes, oh, yes. So it's not well, it's not been shown because of your No, I should, I should have. This, this, is really, this is really another topic. I do have mm. slides available yeah, to show you the nice. representation of a diagram. Mm. But it is images from satellite images, not yeah. from ground images. Yeah, yeah. So it's an interpretation. So there could be problems. Could be could not be totally true. Maybe it is in a different form. Maybe it's in the form of snow. Mm. Is sorry, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 sorry. Yes, yes. Yeah. The, that is the Vallis Marinara. Yes. The one. Does, the that, does that suggest that there was the beginnings of plate yeah. tectonics? Well, yeah, it's not the beginning. It's simply part of the rifting system is right. there. Right. Certainly, you do have others. The uh, adjacent volcanoes have got beautiful grabbins, all yeah. beautiful striped grabbins. Right. So the crust has been pulled apart. Right. It's never been pushed together. So everywhere you see cross sections, they're all horizontal layers. So that suggests pulling apart has occurred. Yeah. So that suggests that that maybe as a planet forms, that that process that, that had gone the next step on Earth. Yes. Didn't occur was there. Beginning. Yes, but Mars. never, yeah. never yeah. continued. No, no, yes, yes. No, no, no. That's that's you're dead right. You're yeah. dead right. Again, yeah. I take come back to the first principle is the size. And the size and the amount of heat generated inside yeah, any planet. Yeah, yeah. In the case of our Earth, there's enough um, core and mantle, enough. Well, all the heat is generated by radioactive decay. Uranium, thorium, potassium, those are the radioactive elements. And they're all there to start. And, and the Earth is a very good, rocks a very good blanket, very good, thermal insulators. Right? We all know how well crypts are to preserve temperature. Mm. The Earth is an insulator, right? Mm. But you have continuous build-up mm. of temperature, of, of radioactive heat, and that creates our volcanoes, right. yeah. creates our granites, melts the rock, right? So, in the case of Earth, there's a lot of it. Yeah. When you have half the diameter mm -hmm. and a fraction of the volume in Mars, mm -hmm. you've got enough Yes, to generate, yeah. but only enough to create the basic rise, right. the fastest rise, right. and a few volcanoes which maintain their position. They don't shift because on Earth you've got a continuous movement and you've got a whole chain of 
volcanoes and mars. So, so part of the key, in your yeah. opinion, is size, the size. Total size and total amount of heat made available. Yeah. Right. In the case of the moon, yeah. history with with all these planets so begin. You have the initial accumulation of planetesimals and asteroids, if you like, to create. So the original heat is enough to melt the rocks, and in the case of the moon, it creates anorthosites, these pale grey uplands of the moon. Right. Later on, as things calm down, they're still building up of heat, the next things that come out are the basalts, right. and flood, and so you get the mare. Right. The pale parts of the moon, highly cratered, very ancient. The youngest parts of the moon are dark and form the flat plains which are asymmetrical actually. There's more on this side than there is on the other side of the moon. Probably because the moon is, <coughs> is, 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 is asymmetric. Right. One last question. Thanks. Thanks. Um, on Mars, you've basically got light and dark areas. What are they basically? Oh, oh on Mars? Yeah. No, on Mars you've got, the other, these are false colour things. And the false colour is one which uh, basically indicates the highlands are in the southern hemisphere, highly cratered, ancient lands. The northern part, now I've become the northern part, is lowlands. In fact, the northern ice cap sits in a basin. Gravitationally, it sits in a basin. It doesn't sit on the high parts, it sits mm. in a basin. And the ice accumulates in that basin, grows and increases and so on. Um, so no, normal colour-wise? Ah, colour-wise, yes, yeah. uh, had I shown you, you would have seen a photograph if you saw my lecture on Mars, a, a recent meteorite impact uh, actually showed fantastic rays of grey and pale uh, material overlying the rusty surface. The present day Martian surface is rust, mm -hmm. iron oxides. But just underneath that surface, and in the drill holes that the, uh, the, the people that have done are all bringing up Grow. reduced environment, mm -hmm. is basically still uh, ferrous iron and uh, reducing environment. So the natural color of, bre of, re of uh, raw rock on Mars <coughs> is gray, not red. The red is the oxidized part, it's the rusty part on the outside. Okay, uh, we are going to uh, thank Vic. We're going to have a coffee break. I'll ask you, if you have any questions for Vic, don't kidnap him in the classroom. Wait until you get down to the uh, coffee room. Uh, Vic, uh, fantastic, another fantastic talk. Uh, every time I listen to you, yeah, I was just going to say, every time I listen to you, I learn something new. So would you please put your hands together for... And join us down in the coffee room. Yeah, this is a special deal, you see. I have so many bottles of wine at home. I'm not able to get through. The chocolates are fantastic. <laughs> if you haven't paid, uh, tonight, please pay check.